My Racetam Horror Story. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanted to share my personal experience of my very, very bad experience messing around with a few of the Racetams. Now, um, the Racetams are kind of like a unique bunch of nootropics. Um, either people usually deep dive in them or people usually have not tried them at all. I'm usually somebody who tries a lot of commercial nootropic blends and most of the time, almost none of the Racetams are used. I feel like it's a little bit misleading because when you come on to these videos, a lot of people really won't talk about very many negative side effects associated with these Rasseltams. Even in worst case scenarios, they say basically the worst case is like you already have enough choline in your body, so you'll feel a little bit of brain fog or you feel won't feel that good if you take a lot of Rasseltams without choline. This is kind of like the usual thing that I see when I look at Rasseltams online. So I had five grams of uh, phenylparacetam hydrazide. I actually really like that stuff. I went through the full five grams. I ended up ordering another one. It took, you know, five, six, seven days. So during that time, Time period I was completely off the phenylparacetam. I actually noticed that once I was off it for a few days I actually felt better than when I was on it. I should have noticed back then but I also had aniracetam and oxyracetam trying those out. So I had tried the aniracetam a few times tossing it in with the phenylparacetam and I didn't really feel it that much. If you see a lot of these YouTubers online a lot of people will say that when you're taking phenylparacetam it is so strong that you almost don't need very many of the other racetams just because phenylparacetam is so strong and you almost might not feel the other ones. So I had aniracetam before oxyracetam, so I had that a few times. I did feel a little bit of anxiety when I took a higher dose of aniracetam, so I was kind of trying to um, pinpoint the perfect dose for me, but so far aniracetam was pretty mild. I actually liked it, taking it near the end of the day if I had to do some work, things like that. So I didn't really have too much issues with that along with the phenylparacetam. Now I was taking the phenylparacetam almost every day. For me, it was, I just really, really liked it. I know you're not supposed to do it, but a lot of people even on YouTube have taken phenylparacetam for three months straight, only taking one day off. So I don't know, I was kind of listening to my body and just kind of going with it. So I was taking phenylparacetam constantly. I, if I was gonna take aniracetam, I would cut out the phenylparacetam just by a little bit. I wouldn't take as much if I was gonna take the aniracetam. So, you know, I've been taking phenylparacetam up to this point. I only got five grams, which is essentially 50 pills or 50 servings. So it's really not that crazy considering that some people take 200 milligrams of phenylparacetam and some people take it two to three times a day. That's usual dosage. So flying through 50 pills would actually be, in my opinion, it doesn't seem that crazy. It's like from the experiences that I've seen of Rastams online, people take quite a lot of doses and they have almost little to no side effects. So I was taking the phenylparacetam, I probably should have taken a break. And then I really was interested in trying the oxyracetam with the aniracetam. So I tried a little bit of phenylparacetam in the morning, like a little bit similar to my normal dose. When I would go for the next dose of phenylparacetam, instead of taking that dose, I was mixing oxyracetam with aniracetam. I would say I had a 750 milligram pill and I filled it you know, maybe three quarters of the way mixing both. So really not too high of a dose. So I mixed two of those pills. I took one at that time. I waited two, three hours later and I took another one. And then later in that night, this is probably where I messed up or I have no idea where I messed up. I took another um, half pill of aniracetam on top of everything because aniracetam has, I think it gets in and out of your body the quickest out of all the racetams and I found it to be a little milder than the oxyracetam so I tried that later on in the night. And then I woke up and I just felt really, really off. I almost felt like I had um, almost like a little bit of shortness of breath, almost kind of like my heart's beating faster than my lungs want to breathe, something like that. I felt it a few times before so I was like, wow, this is freaking me out. So, um, and I'm not going to mess around with that oxyracetam or the aniracetam just gonna take a low dose of phenol once in the morning and then once in midday. I actually did not feel phenylparacetam for a long, long time. It seemed very, very safe. And after you take it for a while, it's almost like it gets stronger. So it was almost getting stronger every time that I was taking it. So at that point, um, I was just feeling absolutely terrible. I was at the gym. I remember even going into the sauna and I took a picture of me and I looked absolutely destroyed. And at this point I was like, wow, my body is completely wrecked with all these racetams. Like I need to give it as much break as I possibly can. Before I even um, get into the effects that I had, the last thing I want to say is that I have two nootropics, actually three nootropics that have 
um, Choline Bitartrate, Alpha GPC in them. And I take those almost every day because I usually have caffeine almost every day. So usually instead of caffeine, I'll have these nootropic blends and they contain choline, which is what you're supposed to combine with these racetams. So I was getting lots of choline. On top of that, I really like burgers, which have red meat, which has choline. And I do like eggs. I eat probably burgers or eggs probably about five times a week as it is. So I noticed before, before this day happened, I accidentally had a normal energy drink without choline and I didn't have any meat or eggs, but this was again one day. I normally have choline all the time. I was thinking like, you know, maybe if you don't have any choline for a couple of weeks, this would hit you really hard, but no. So I assume that might've been it. On top of that, I, I ran out of my electrolytes as well. And I've heard some weird story about electrolytes um, affecting how the racetams are absorbed, things like that. And I'm somebody who really likes electrolytes, so I had to wait for it to come in the mail. So it's kind of like a perfect storm, but I, can't believe how terrible I felt crashing off all these racetams. They made me completely sick. Um, they made me extremely sensitive to caffeine. Like um, the next few days I was you know, trying even little bits of caffeine, even to this day, it's been about probably a week since I've had this issue. If I have a couple sips of an energy drink, talking about three or four, massive, massive anxiety. I, can, I literally cannot sip any caffeinated drink unless it has nootropics in it. And I'm somebody before who would normally have probably about 400 milligrams of caffeine a day, which is you know probably about four small cups of coffee, maybe two large cups of coffee. So caffeine was something that did not really give me too much anxiety. I could manage it very, very well. In fact, it actually worked well with me. But one of the days I drank almost a full C4 and I was literally felt sick and anxious for eight to nine, 10 hours. Yeah, that's still going to this day. I actually tried an energy drink today. I was scared to even sip it, sipped it and just felt terrible. I had confusion, anxiety. It was such an unusual feeling because I had felt all sorts of negative, you know, things in my life like bad stomach aches or, you know, staying up all night or taking traditional stimulants or coming off caffeine. Choline is something that kind of like, it gives you focus and at the same time kind of calms you out. And I felt the opposite. I felt like I had no focus and I felt like nothing I could do was calm me down. I was actually getting hot flashes, which I've never gotten in my entire life. I would just literally think about something negative and I would just get this flash of emotion that would just shut off like any sort of productivity that I was doing, just completely shut it off. I was, you know, having to reach out to every possible person in my repertoire to help me calm down. This was just really a terrible, terrible, sickening experience. And I understand that I did a lot of issues here, but I think people really need to be careful with these RAS attempts. I had no idea they were that bad. I mean, you got people on here saying that they take paracetam for like four years straight. The way people talk about it, they seem like there's little to no side effects and you're gonna get side effects if you don't take choline. And probably less than two months experimenting with these things and not even really going too, too crazy. I was absolutely sickeningly wrecked and disgusted. I was so mentally messed up that literally my body went back to normal, but I was in such a terrible headspace that I literally took me a few days to get out of the mental funk that I was in even once I was back. And then on top of that, I had a few days of understanding that I could literally overnight cannot have caffeine. I like literally cannot have it. I can have a low dose in a nootropic blend that actually feels good. It's like a rock star, 160 milligrams, like a couple sips. You'd have to pay me like a thousand dollars to drink that thing. No freaking way. So I just want everyone to be really, really careful. I had crippling anxiety. I was extremely confused. I never thought I would actually feel normal again. I almost thought I like kicked something in my brain that was never gonna come back, you know? I really do think if you're really careful with these racetams, you won't have this experience, but there's just not enough warnings about this. I mean, people talk about attack dosing racetams, which means taking a large dose the first time that you're gonna use it, which I would freaking almost never do. Just because of this might happen, I see the logic because it seems like racetams get stronger almost every time you use them. So it's almost like, you know, if you take a really large dose at once, you're barely gonna feel it. And if you take a medium dose after you've been taking it for a while, it'll feel really strong because it's been in your system. I just want everyone to be very, very careful. Again, I was using phenylparacetam, hydrazide, oxyracetam, and aniracetam. I found that the, probably one of the worst culprits was the oxyracetam. If you look at a lot of literature on it, I mean, there are some people that have some good experiences with it, 
but a lot of people say that they just they don't feel like themselves they get a lot of work done and they just they don't even notice that they're working apparently the effects or the mechanism of action for oxyracetam from my understanding is that it finds all these stored choline in your body and just releases them which kind of scared me when I first heard that because it's like, you know, that's kind of like your emergency use trolling if you run into a crazy issue and you're just dumping it. Maybe you'd wanna do that every now and again, but people are like, I think there needs to be a real big warning. I mean, there's only so much trolling you have extra sitting around your body before it's gone. You can't just flush it all out. So I really wish you guys would be very, very, very careful with this stuff. If I were to recommend one racetam, it would be phenylparacetam. And I really do have some really, really good experiences with it. And I do think if you were to use it two to three times a week, you'd be absolutely fine. Again, I took this around two weeks straight, maybe a little bit less. And then I was combining a few other ones. But again, I wasn't like upping my dose every day or taking the same dose of phenylparacetam and then putting the oxyracetam and the antiracetam on top of it. No, I took a little bit of the phenol in the morning, waited till it went away and mixed the two. So I just hope that everybody's really careful out there. If you wanna put some more knowledge down below, yeah, feel free to do that. I was extremely screwed over by this. I even went and bought a bunch of trolling to see if it would help and it took so long. I don't even know if that was what helped me, but I finally feel good today. So anyways, guys, please be careful with racetams. And if you ever get that feeling that you just did a bunch of work and you and it almost feels like you weren't present, like you don't know how it got done, but it got done. I think at that point, I would give it a break from the racetams. Um, if Make sure you feel 100% normal and sharp before you go ahead and do more, in my opinion, because they almost have this slightly doling quality. I just don't want too much of it. I want a little bit, a little bit when I need it, but I want to also be sharp. So anyways, guys, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully, having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.